Hey, 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 it's Hayden. Again, if you see, well, if you've seen the video before this, you know it's the same day. But I told you I was going to make this um, little review or story time or whatever you call it. Like, it's a review, but yeah, I'm just talking about it too. It's not, like, all about, like, my opinion. Like, I guess some of it's just telling you about it too. Of Detroit Become Human. And I really like this game. I just finished it. Literally just finished it. And I like how there's different, like, alternatives to it. This game is basically a story game. Like, Okay, um, it's basically kind of like a telltale story in a way. It's, it is, but it's like not at the same time. Um, how far will you go to be free? It's about, all about being free. It's like, goes back to like the slavery, but of, instead of if humans, it's these robots. Because it's in the year, um, 2038, and in 2038, um, androids and everything, basically robots were more, um, like smart and they could actually think a little bit for themselves but they had like a barrier where we would tell them not to do certain things so because they were controlled a bit so it's like they couldn't exactly hurt you and stuff like that but um basically it was in a time where you could actually buy your own android to clean the house or they had androids working at certain places so that way humans didn't have to do it but then yet it took humans jobs and they some humans were mad and also some humans didn't see them as like other humans so they would look at them as a little bit lower to the point where they felt like, oh, I could just kick them or hurt them and I don't really care, you know, but they still, these androids, they help you, so why would you want to hurt someone that helps you? And they don't seem as alive just because they're, our blood's red, but their blood is blue. Even though they're not human, they still are so smart that they actually think for themselves a bit and they actually do uh, emulate, emulate human emotions and there's only one robot, like, once you're the robot, if you get killed... That's it for you, like, for the, whatever that, that one has memories and everything, it's dead, you know? So it's like, they might not exactly be alive like us, but they were, like, almost to it, and they emulate, they were just so smart that they could emulate emotion, and they actually felt them. So why would you hurt somebody that feels emotions like you, you know what I mean? So why couldn't they be free? Why did they have to work for you? Why couldn't they just live amongst you and then have jobs and stuff? Of course, you're not gonna have, like, every single thing that a human has, just because humans are a little different, you know what I mean? But... Like, they should be free, too. So it says, how far will you go to be free? Detroit 2038. Lifelike androids have replaced the human workforce. They never tire, disobey, or say no until something changes. Some of them have started to behave irrationally as if they were feeling emotions. Were they? Were they just too smart that they actually do feel emotions? Hmm. So you tell your own story. Every choice has a consequence. Take control of three androids in their quest to discover who they really are. Face moral dilemmas and make life or death, death decisions. And it's only a one player game, so it's not like you play with your friends or anything, it's just one for you. Um, your friends can watch you and stuff, but it's like a one player game, that's it. Um, so yeah, this game right now is still kind of expensive. I paid $54.99 in dollars because I'm in the US. So, um, actually no, I have a pro membership, or sorry, not pro, elite pro membership at GameStop, so it was $43.99 instead. So a little, little bit cheaper. Um, and I got this pre-owned too, you knew it would be, would have been 60 bucks. Um, and this is rated M for Mature, 17 and up, so, yeah, just to let you guys know, I guess, in case you want to know. Um, this game, I like the cover art on here too, it's really cool. I think it really, um, like, really goes with it. As you can see, he has, this is actually one of the characters, his name is Marcus. And there's three characters that you go, go from, and they, they like, kind of split it up. You go from one to the other, like... You don't go from one and then you finish their story and then you go to the other. Basically, they're all three in one story in a way. Like, you go from one and then it goes to the other part of the story with the other character. Then the other part of the story with the other character. So that's basically how it goes. And, um, so you got one named Connor. You got Kara, which is a girl. So Connor's a guy. Guy android. Kara is a girl android. And... Marcus is a boy android. So let me tell a little bit of Connor's story. So Connor basically is a, like, I'm just gonna say like an age, like a, he's like a detective, like an agent um, sort of thing. And I can't remember the exact thing. But then you got the lieutenant who, he's basically the boss of him and he's the android who's like the sidekick type thing. And the lieutenant doesn't like androids at first. He didn't like androids at all because there's something that happened with his son. And I'm not gonna give that all away, but... Something that happened with the son, the son is no longer alive, so he hated them until a certain point. So basically that's that. And Connor, basically he's very obedient 
and he's very and he has only one thing he wants to do is accomplish his mission so he'll do whatever it takes to accomplish it but in a way that's obedient until maybe the end you don't know hmm um so yeah that's him and he's very pretty much pretty nice to the lieutenant for the most part even when the lieutenant treats him like crunch at times um the next person is kara and kara is um a robot that that was basically a housemaid type thing she was supposed to be like a mom of the house but she was like basically like a housemaid and she would help clean up this guy named todd's house and todd was like a drunk and did drugs and he just had a bad life and he just kind of was a very violent person so and there was a daughter there named alice there is a daughter daughter named alice living there and it's supposed to be todd's uh daughter but there's something odd about her in a way which you'll notice eventually um and kara Basically, she had her memory wipe, wipe, so she didn't remember everything to do with Alice and the, um, to do with Alice, which is, she's supposed to be, I think, six years old, five or six years old, and she doesn't remember everything to do with Alice, so she, like, her memory was wiped, so she remembered most things, but certain things she was like, hmm, if young, because they had to refix her, Todd had to refix her, because he guess he ran her over with his car or something on accident, on accident, hmm, um, so yeah, and she just wants, and more than anything to be a mom so she kind of cares for Alice and in, in a way that's even more than an android should be so is she emulating their emotions hmm the next person is Marcus and Marcus is um a different kind of android he's more of a leader and he lived with this guy I think his name was Carl I'm pretty sure his name was Carl he was in a wheelchair and he cared for him he actually had a good android life a pretty good android life living in a house with a with a, like a master that was actually pretty polite to him and actually sh tried to show him things like painting and stuff like that even though you should they don't really emphasize that kind of stuff with the androids as long as you, I mean if, as long as there's no harm but he was teaching them things to, to think outside the box and that helped Marcus later in the future to you know to fulfill his destiny basically and then Carl ended up dying he had like a disease or something he was older yes but he had like some disease too and like bad organs, like, things were going wrong in his system, you know, um, but yeah, all, all these three, the, well, all Marcus really wants us to be free, Kara wants to be free because of Alice, she wants us to protect Alice, and Connor, he's just more the type where he just doesn't really know what to think, he wants it to be one way because that's what he's told, he has one mission to accomplish, but later on he might start feeling a little differently just a little bit and you can kind of choose their destiny in a way too, choose their destiny um with the, the story but they all pretty much stay like the same personality wise for the most part but you kind of like change what happens to them at the end things like that or little like little things like who's gonna stay in their lives things like that um yeah and certain things in here really define the, the game so you gotta really make a, a choice you want pretty much i guess because you can't change it Unless you replay the game over again. Um, so basically, I honestly really like this game. I feel like the only thing I didn't like was the controls just a little bit. Like, I felt like sometimes, like, but sometimes it felt like you couldn't even really move sometimes. And it's not my controller, but it's just sometimes it's just the, the way the game was. And also, I wish there was a thing where you could make them run. Because it's, like, cause sometimes you're going very slow in the game. And I wish there was, like, a button where they, they make the like all throughout the game you're allowed to run pretty much unless it's like a part where you really can't but I, it will only let you run in really like very limited spots and it was like annoying when you had to just walk and then turn your camera and sometimes it was hard with the camera like you'd had to turn it and it was just really hard it was like sometimes it was just hard to keep up with it with the certain frames and you had to like change your uh direction I guess you could say but other than that honestly I thought it was a very good story and very immersive, very inter entertaining, and it really made me think, like, something like this could sort of happen in the future, I don't know exactly like this, no, but, like, with the robots, I think they could make something kind of intelligent to this, because I already have made something, if you watch on YouTube, it's called Sophia, I suggest looking it up, because there's actually a real, um, robot, it's not Android, but, like, robot, it's a little similar to this, that, like, talks and everything, and it kind of, sort of looks human, not as human as these guys, but sort of does, um, but I thought that was pretty cool, so if you play, if you, if you're interested in Androids and all that, before you play the game, maybe you should look up Sophia, or even if you already played this game, you're just watching this, look up Sophia, the robot, on YouTube, because I think 
you'll be pretty interested in it if you're into this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, guys, but I'm just going to say I really did like the game. It was a really good game. I just feel like just the controls could have been a little better. But other than that, I'm going to rate this about this game about a 8.5 out of 10. I want to say a 9, but I don't know. I felt like the story in a way was a little shorter, shorter than I expected. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I'm going to say an 8.5 out of 10. And anything over 7 is great for me, so I mean... This game was great, honestly, in my opinion. So I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe if you guys are new. I do some gaming videos on here. Other than that, I do like a lot of different things like reviews, things like that. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Hayden out. Peace.